that the reason why I ask about who is your direct report, uh, direct uh, manager is, it's, it's, I mean, most leaders really don't even have a clue about this sort of thing. And those that are managers on this uh, call, okay, there are two relationships that you can have with a subordinate. One is what I call tax assigning relationship. Okay. So your manager, who is the administrator, has a tax assigning relationship with you, with your role. So he assigns tax to you. Your CEO should be playing the role of tax initiation relationship. So he initiates a tax through your manager. Rather unfortunate, that's not what is happening. That's why you are caught in that politics of power play. And a lot of people are in that. As leaders, we should, your CEO shouldn't be doing what he's doing. Okay. Why do people do that? Because for all you know, the administrator is not good at doing his job. Instead of CEO calling him and having a very nice chat with him about his behavior and attitude towards work, he is trying to avoid that and making your life uncomfortable. Okay. I keep on telling leaders, there's nothing wrong with calling people to tell them they are not performing. It depends on how you say it. Bring it to the attention. That's part of the feedback mechanism that we, we spoke, I spoke about. Okay. So you are caught in between someone that your CEO probably doesn't see that is more capable and he sees the capability in you. And therefore, he is rather assigning tax to you. And the person who is supposed to be having a tax assigning relationship with you is not happy with that. How do you go about it? I think that what you need to do is to um, talk to your, um, what do you call it? Your manager who is the administrator and say, look, this arrangement that is going on here sometimes you become very uncomfortable with it because you really don't want to be seen as um undermining your direct report authority okay however well, how should you go about how should you go about it if the ceo comes giving you a direct instruction to carry out how do i go about it i don't want to do things that might appear like i'm undermining authority or you don't know what are you okay with? What arrangement are you okay with? I can't stop the CEO from coming to tell me what to do. Are you able to talk to him about it? Or how do you want me to handle these things? Okay. So put a question with him. Let him prefer a solution. And, if, and then you go by his solution. Talk to your direct report, which is the administrator, and say, this arrangement that is going on at work, I'm not comfortable with it because it might have come across like your authority, my, I'm undermining authority far be it. That's not my intention and I'll never do something like that. I can also tell my, the CEO that you can't give me a tax. Go and tell my administrator to come and tell me. It will be very disrespectful to him. So how do I handle this, my, my, my manager? How do I handle this? How do you want me to handle this? What would be your preferred way of me handling this thing? And then I think let that be a starting point. Uh, but I can I see your frustration. There's a lot of people, and I've had I have been in such situation before. But most of the time, it's because when the, the guy at the top sees the capability in you and not your manager, and he is not bold enough to confront that issue then you become the element of, of politics. Now you have to be a politician between them. Okay. So don't be frustrated. It is, it is a good mechanism. It tells you that the CEO believes in your capability, but you need to manage your, your two bosses. See, sometimes we need to learn how to manage up. Okay. Managing up is a very important skill in growing in your organization. You need to be able to learn how to manage up, not manage down. We are always taught how to manage down. Okay. But managing up is an essential skill. And it's more about communicating and engaging 
and and trying to sense what will be his attitude how does he feel if you talk to him he will tell you solution and how it, he might even say you don't worry i know what's going on yeah if he tells you go ahead what have you done he solved the problem now you know that he's not going to be worried about that you've made it clear to him that you don't intend to amend his authority and and then when he says oh well don't worry go ahead if he tells you to do something go ahead I said okay whatever he tells me i'll put you in the known so that you know what i'm doing okay because he, he will also not be able to go and tell the ceo don't give alex direct job or he's going to say oh, i have no problem don't worry keep on and then what you do you inform oh the ceo wants me to work on this thing and he is giving me this assignment okay and then the other thing to watch out is when the two of you are giving you assignments okay so your manager tells you alex do a b c d and whilst you are in the middle of doing that i need it today whilst you are in the middle of doing that the ceo comes to you and say can you do a b c d okay that one you can't stop your direct boss's job and go and do the ceo's one because of that what you need to do is to be able to respectfully tell the ceo um manager x has given me this assignment to complete immediately i know your job is urgent but can you engage him so that i can be relieved of doing his job and focus on yours see there's nothing wrong with telling him that you are not saying you are not going to do it what you're saying is that you are doing something for um, this person and you think it's not going to be um right if you stop it without telling him if your manager is if your ceo is very bossy and power drunk he probably will not want to do that he probably will say to you who 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 do you think is the ceo in this organization i'm the ceo do what i tell you to do okay but if it's that sort of power drunk and he's not really going to take it lightly then go and talk to your boss and say oh i was in the middle of completing your job the ceo has brought this thing for me to do so what do i do um, is it okay if i work on his immediately or what should i do you ask for guidance from him but if the ceo is not a bossy type you might suggest to him that he speaks with your manager that you've given and so that you can work on that assignment so be more clever and smart and, and act wisely with them know their personality know who is power drunk and know how to work with the two of them never worry about what others think about you doing your job okay that's one mistake that we are always thinking about what other colleagues are saying you didn't tell yourself you want to send a memo it is your problem to handle that if they feel jealous because you are being looked at let them work hard as well okay we cannot push away favors that we get from god if you find favor before them that's it you know you can't please everybody you see so all you need to do is to do your job and do it well and to the best of your ability you're not doing that to spite anybody it is what it is okay now there are four people in organization uh, in in the way they communicate there is a bold there is a sympathetic there is the expressive and then there is the technical i mean the sympathetics are always worried about what people are saying or they don't want conflict you know i'm, I'm sure you are you, from what you are saying you might be one of the sympathetics you know sympathetics are more careful about um they are good team players they are very loyal and they are you know they don't want conflict if you leave a sympathetic in a, in terms of in in charge of a department no decision will be made because he wants to please everybody before the decision will be made so once you are about making the decision and one person left out and said no no you know i think we should do sympathetic will change his position right now because that person has to be pleased before we go ahead that's how sympathetics are it's not bad they are, as i said they are very good team players very loyal very they know how to solve conflict but they don't normally become very good lawyer, uh, leaders if they don't solve that because leadership is about making hard decisions okay and you don't need to get 100 percent of the information to get it sometimes you need to go with your hand so 
And those that are sympathetic, this is the sort of thing they think about. They're thinking about another person, how he's going to take it than them. Don't worry about that. If, it's, if you do the memo and you feel that you're competent enough to send it, send it. As to other colleagues, what they think, it's up to them. It's their mindset. It's their thinking. Your mindset is that I'm doing my writing and I'm doing the thing. I'm a successful guy. So, so you want him to give permission, go and get permission from all your colleagues that I'm telling Alex to send this or you have done the job. And then you see how you are limiting yourself. This is, this is bringing you to the limelight and you are pushing it away. Do it. Don't worry about them. Now, the, the analy the, those that are technical or the analytics, they are more detailed oriented. They will ask for all information before they make decisions. Sympathetics are very good with working with people. Their only drawback is that they struggle to make a decision if everybody is not on board. Expressives, very persuasive, they can work with people, but they lead by persuading people to get the job done. The bold, they are rude. That's how people see them, but they are results oriented. If they want the result, it will be delivered. They are not people oriented, but they are results oriented. They are tax oriented. So they come, they tell you this, this, then that. He doesn't care how you're going to get the results. All he wants is get it done. And they communicate. They will not hide it. They say things as they see it. You didn't do your job. You are, they won't mind even saying you are lazy. I don't. They do that. I don't care what you think, get the results done. The board, they speak the thing as it is. So the sympathetics and the board cannot work together easily because the sympathetic is more about emotions and how he's feeling. The board can have that sort of level of thinking. So he comes in and is, there's always, so the sympathetic things that the boards are too rude. Okay, they are very rude. They talk to people anyhow. That's their communication style. When you know all these people and how they communicate, then you know how to manage them. It's not to say because I'm bold, so I need to be rude, but I'm conscious about the fact that I'm bold, so I need to make sure that if I'm dealing with sympathetic, it's very interested in ways. If you have a, a team member who is always thinking through words that were said two, three weeks ago, and is called in because he's sympathetic, <laughs> they don't like the very sometimes sympathetics can be. When you speak again, when you speak about somebody in a way that they they will be so offended for the people person, even though the other person that has moved on is still offended because he's sympathetic. The both are not like that. So sympathetics and both have, have a very difficult time working together if they don't know each other that this person is a board and how to they haven't gotten the skill of working together. The expressive and the technical are very, very difficult because the expressives. They know how to tell a story. They are big picture. They are confident, but they haven't done the detailed work. Okay. So they will tell you all the nice things, but they haven't done the work. The technical and the analytics have done the detailed work. So they are like, you, you are always talking big. King promise. You are, you are always promising, but you haven't done the work. You're asking detailed questions about what he wants to do. He hasn't done it. But all these people working, they, you need all these personalities to build a strong team. If I look at my team and I do such things and I find out what are the personality types of my team. And if I'm biased towards one direction, if I'm hiring, I will intentionally hire somebody with a different personality type because you need all of them. I need the board to get results and tax them. I need the expressive to pick the big picture and tell the story right. I need the, de the technical guy to check our decisions that we are making, that we've crossed all the I's and dot the T's. I need a sympathetic to take the temperature of, of the environment, okay? And see whether everybody is, is on board. Are people hurt during the process of making a decision? How do we deal with it? Uh, that's what we said on that particular uh, interview. If you listen to the video, we said, use feedback mechanism to get what people think about you. And if you have one person saying something to you, it's not enough data, okay? Um, especially if it's not your boss and it's your colleague, okay? Uh, it's, you might take it, but um, I won't put so much emphasis on it compared to if three people are telling me the same thing. So I have three 
um, guys or two. I asked, how do you give me some feedback? Oh, you are this, you are that, you are that. I asked another person, he says the same thing. I, um, I triangulate it, you know, I have two, three things, team, common things that are coming out. That tells you that, you know, that's how people see you. Okay. And mostly it's going to be things about, well, we don't like the way you talk. We don't like the way you carry yourself. Sometimes you come across very this. Oh, you are very good at this, but here, look, I think you can do it better. That's different. Okay. We're talking about being so much concerned, not because of what people would think. You see? So you're going to do something and you are worried about it. I give you an example where you want to start something and like someone, I think after the call, um, after the interview we had, a lady sent a message and saying that he wanted to send me feedback. The first thing that came to him, well, he's, he'll be too busy, he's not going to look at it. So he nearly did not send the feedback. She nearly did not send the feedback. Okay. Wow. Then she said, immediately she remembered what I said. And then she sent it and I responded. It's your thinking. You are thinking, um, for me, that, that's what we are talking about. Don't think for me. You see, don't think for your boss. Don't think for him and say that he's going to do this. Just try it. Put it out there. So long as you, you are convinced that you are doing the right thing and not malicious and mischievous. Don't think for people. So in the case of Alex, where he was concerned about, because Alex's question is that, my boss, when I write a memo to her or him or her, I'm not sure whether it's a male or female, him or her, I'm expecting her to publish it, but he's telling me to do it. And you know, when I do that, my other colleagues would think something. No. In that case, Alex is not doing anything wrong. He's been instructed to send the thing. Why is he worried about how his colleagues are going to see him? Is it a case that his colleagues believe that he's been bad mouthing them to the boss? If that's the case, that is not right. See? So is Alex thinking that ah, if, I'm, if I'm going to send it, I'm going to be seen as the one winning favor? And my, brad, my friends are thinking that um, I have been bad mouthing them. That's why I'm the only one being given this assignment. If that's what you are thinking, try and get feedback from your team. That, is that how they think about you? So you go to them and say, uh, you know, I want to, you to tell me honest truth as we said it on the call, if you listen it, go to them, ask them, I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear only. I want to improve on myself. What are the things I need to do? If it is a concern for them that they feel that you are buff mouthing them and talking negative about people, they will find a way of telling you. If they are not able to tell you, you will not be able to know. Okay. So then you'll be able to know that, oh, okay, the people think that I have been buff mouthing them to the boss. That's why I'm getting the opportunity to do this. That is the data. Okay, then now you have to be concerned that, um, you know, these people are thinking about me this way. So anytime I'm going to send this thing. So then you try and make sure that you take steps to rectify that. But don't be overly concerned about what you think it might be conferring in your mind. It is your mind that is thinking like that. Okay. So it's the same thing. You have an issue you need to discuss with your manager or your boss. Ah, this person is the CEO. I can't talk to him. I can If you get opportunity and your boss, you can address it with your boss. And let's say you've got into a place where the two of them are standing there. Talk to the person. Don't be worried about how is he going to take it. I'm worried that a lot of the time we are thinking for others and that's not even their thought process. They are not even thinking about that. I would have missed a very good and a golden opportunity in my career, you know. And that's the same thinking. I was about to do the thing and I was like, what if the person doesn't think that I'm too arrogant and I'm too ambitious? No, no, I'm not going to say. I wrote the message it took me three days. And what was my mind playing with me on that? What if I send this thing and the person, what if, what if, what if? And finally I sent it. Guess what? It came out being a very good one. And the person 
it brought about my upliftment. You see, so I would have sat there thinking, what if, what if, what if, what if, ah, and then and imagine how many number of times we've had the urge to do something and we stop because we think somebody might take it. Some we don't take the opportunity. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm not saying we shouldn't cherish feedback. We should be worried about things that our friends tell us as a feedback that we work on and how they think about us. But when we get the data point and they have not mentioned it, what we shouldn't be constraining ourselves is to say, um, I do, this thing that I'm going to do, this person will be worried. So this is how my friends will see me. This is how they will think. Sometimes you get an opportunity to ask questions or talk and say, my, the people will think I'm too, I'm too known. That's a typical one. And Kofoga can say, you're too known. Today. You are saying that nobody is telling you as in Crawford said you too know that you know so then that constrains you. So that's why you don't talk and ask questions. That you probably will going to help a lot of people. So don't let us confuse those two. You I think you should ask for feedback from the your team. And if you think that they would think you are a bad player, team player, ask them. That's why the feedback is, is good. You ask them, and if they are, you are a bad player, you get an idea of what they are thinking about you. But don't constrain your ability to go up because you think somebody will not be happy. That one is not right. It's not fair on you. You see. Yeah. So, so uh, I'll give you the opportunity for your final words, and then we'll close. Thank you so much for this opportunity and making time to listen to me as well. And the question, those were good questions. And I think, I don't think we've been able to solve all questions. There might be questions that comes on on a daily basis as you go to work. That's why this is a journey to me. It's a journey. You don't just you know when you get all the answers now. And there are challenges that are going to come and you need a guidance on how you're going to handle it. And that's why I think the, the master class is going to be important because I'm sure there will be mentoring and coaching as part of the process um, um, of, of, of getting involved in what HiCard is doing. Um, my one CEO that I worked with once said that um, he got a lesson from his 14 year old son who said, because anytime he comes home, he's like, oh, this guy at my work is very stupid. You know, he's very stupid. This person is stupid. That Every day he's saying that. Then it's about his 14 year old son said, dad, it's okay for you to have say one person is stupid or two, but when it gets to three, four, then maybe you should be checking about yourself, you know, and that's true. You know, um, sometimes we might think that the problem with others, but maybe, and everybody around us is bad except us. Sometimes too, it is because of us. So, but you need this coaching, this mentoring, these directions. We've not come this far because, um, because um, we, we didn't have people that were directing us and coaching us and giving us the feedback that we needed. Some of the feedbacks are very tough. And they are ones that you hear and for one or two days, you're struggling to battle, you're battling with that because it goes to the crust of things that um, you've been working, running away from. And maybe all of a sudden somebody tells you, you know. So it's a journey. I see this thing Haikad is doing as a journey. Um, you can't just read a book, as he said, and then that's it. You know, maybe I went through, I learned it through the hard way. Um, but you can stand on the, the shoulders of giants and move to the next level, okay? And then take the experience of um, 20 years or whatever years people have gone through this book and understood and practiced, um, and just you have this leap up there. When I started my career as a mining engineer in Goldfields, um, I was fortunate 
my first boss or manager had about 20 years experience in the industry from the US. And what did I do? I just made sure that he poured all the 20 years of experience in me. I'm very inquisitive, very I want to know everything. I can't learn by telling me this how it's done. I learn by you telling me why it is done that way. Because I will want to change how it is done. Okay. So very inquisitive, asked a lot of questions. And I thank him that he was patient to listen to me and ask me questions. And I was very thoughtful, ambitious. And then I would be doing more than what my average colleagues would do. What were my colleagues, some of my colleagues doing, complaining about the system? And I told one of them that if you think the system is not helpful, you, I think you don't need to stay around. I, if I come into a system that's not good, I, I don't have, I'll find ways of getting out of the system. But those people were complaining. I was downloading all the 20 years of experience. No wonder. Every year within the organization, I was being promoted to the extent that these same people went about telling and asking that same manager and the head of the department that what is Sam doing that every year you guys are promoting him? See, they didn't know the secret. I've gotten 20 years of experience within two years. And I'm riding on that 20 years experience. So I knew more than my colleagues. I understood more than my colleagues because I stood on this giant, this, the shoulders of that manager of mine who had 20 years experience. So um, this serves as an opportunity for us to talk more, mentor more, coach more, and answer more questions as we go ahead. And I don't think the amount really, it's given the fact that we've said that it's the mindset that will make a difference. You need a mindset to carry you through your journey to the top. And that's what this is going to do. It's going to develop the mindset that you need to walk through your career. This mindset that you are developing, you will need it at the age of 60. Okay. Somebody is 60 years, but he thinks like somebody is 20 years. It's a mindset. Is a thinking. The same fear that the person had when he was 20 years has dominated a person even now that he's 60 and gone on retirement and he's still there. So be part of it and I hope to be hearing more from you and I'll be part of the journey. I'm sure Dan is going to pull me in because as I said, I'm committed to impacting the life of others and making sure that others' life are better off than where I am now. I can see people that are rising to the top already and have come past me. That's what we want to do. That's the sort of stories we want to hear um, as we start this journey together. And so be part of the story, be part of the data point that uh, Haikad is going to say, this person started when he was this, and in the next 10 years or in the next five years, he's at this point. That's the story we want to hear. And that's the story I'll be so happy to be part of. Thanks so much for your time. And that's that's the uh, that's it for me, Dan. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much for sticking and staying. Thank you for your commitment.